Good morning and welcome. Is anyone following a, a keto diet? You know, can you raise your hand? So, um, oh no, keep your hands up. Look around. You know, today, can you make a point to meet one or two other people who are doing a keto diet? You'll find them here. <laughs> and um, so now, how many of you, uh, hands up again, how many of you followed a keto diet over um, six months? Keep your hands up. Uh, how about longer than a year? Keep your hands up. Um, a year and a half? Two years? Interest, look, and you can still look around. I mean, the, and five years? Ten years? Fifteen years? Yeah, you may have to do some calculations. Twenty years? Jackie, you win. Um, it's my great pleasure today to have Jackie Eberstein also be in attendance, one of my teachers, as you'll see in just a minute. Um, but now, how many of you have been dragged here by your family or friend and really don't want to be here on this beautiful day? Okay. Glenn, please remove this people. Please remove people. Um, no. Welcome, and I hope, you know, just by being in a group that has had success and, and, um, is, and come out to share their experience, you'll maybe catch the, the idea that it's an okay thing to do. Um, so uh, the next step, I learned this at the Dr. Berg Summit up in Washington, D.C. just uh, about a month ago. Uh, they did a, now has anyone lost weight on a keto diet? Raise your hand. You know, look around. Um, and, oh, no, keep your hands up. Um, and then, uh, how many of you lost more than 10 pounds? Keep your hands up. 50 pounds? Hands up. 75 pounds? Hands up. 100 pounds? Why don't you guys stand up, okay? Thank you, um, and special thanks for the people who are actually going to come up and share their stories on the stage. That you know, many of these folks are not professionally trained uh, uh, speakers, and they do it because they want to pay it forward and inspire other people, which is fantastic. Keto events, adapt keto events, are a way to bring keto leaders and keto followers in the community together. We've gone around the country. We started in Roxboro last year. How many of you were at the Roxborough event? Yeah, it was uh, fantastic. Um, and um, I'm going to give a little uh, background of keto and low carb, the science and, and the way I, I'm thinking about things today based on many different teachers, a lot of different research, and then end up with a, a kind of a highlight of the year for me as I've been asked to teach around the world and we'll uh, end up on a, a story called the, the Keto Fastosis Warriors. Um, so this uh, slide deck, the therapeutic benefits of a low carb keto lifestyle, I, I've noticed also there's some confusion about what keto means. Um, have you heard of you know, exogenous ketones that I don't really ever talk about in my, in my office? And where do I find the grass fed beef and butter? You know, <laughs> Do I have to calculate my macros and use an app? And you know, what are your, your ketone levels in the blood? You know, if you've, is anyone checking your own ketone levels in the blood? Yeah, you know, just a few. Um, uh, keto chow, really? Is that a thing? You know, yeah, it's actually a pretty good product. Um, and what are net carbs and total carbs? We'll go over all that. Um, who are the two keto dudes anyway, right? <laughs> They're actually pretty hip uh, now, uh, anyway, and they put on Keto Fest in New London, Connecticut. And do I really have to put butter in my coffee? I get that all the time. No, you don't. Um, but, so you're going to get my version, uh, what we call the uh, classic keto or uncomplicated keto that's been around since 1863 and before there was any discussion about keto products and all that. Although a lot of them are fine, and, uh, but you want to be a little bit uh, judicious about that. I, I do hear people coming today thinking 
And we heard that uh, Tyler, Tyler uh, Cartwright, thank you for coming with uh, Keto Gains. Uh, in other parts of the world, they think keto is just a product and, and a brand, and, and it's really uh, a way of eating. Uh, and I hope to shed that, some light on that for you today. If you hadn't heard my story, just very briefly, I was in the VA hospital, Veterans Affairs Hospital here in Durham, and two of my patients did this kind of crazy thing. They'd lost 50 pounds, you know, with the nerve. Um, they actually had success. And, but, you know, I was the preventive-minded internist, which is kind of an oxymoron if you're in the <laughs> medical world, I'm finding. And I sent all of my patients to the dietitian, and they never lost weight for, for weight loss. They never lost weight. So it was like, the, you know, these two events, lightning striking, that people lost. They did it without me even helping them. And how rude is that, you know? Um, so the, I said, well, you know, what are you doing? And I remember it, I'm, all I'm doing is eating steak and eggs. You know, kind of looked at it like, okay. You know, so I started learning about it in, in the book. I read Dr. Atkins' books, and, and I said, no, don't do this. It's, it's, it's going to be bad for you. And then one of the patients, I remember, he said, well, what are you afraid of? Why do you think it's bad? Your cholesterol is going to go up, I said. And he said, well, why don't you measure it? Why don't you check it? And I'm like, well, okay. You know? I mean, today I've heard all these stories of doctors not checking it because they know it's going to be bad. Well, I was at least you know, in a research training career where I, you know, maybe I didn't know everything. And so I checked, and two in a row, the cholesterol levels were better. Whether you looked at the total in the LDL, the old way, or the triglyceride and HDL, the new way. And so I thought, well, if everyone says this has to be, this is bad, and it's always bad, and I saw two in a row and it wasn't bad, maybe there's more to it. Maybe we don't know everything about it. So what would any young doctor do? I wrote Dr. Atkins a letter. He called back on the phone, and he kind of broke the ice. You know, I said, well, where's the research? And he said, why do I need research? I've been doing this 30 years. Yeah. Yeah, okay, that's supposed to be funny. Um, <laughs> they would always say, if you want, to, you want research, come to our waiting rooms and just talk to the people or fill, you know, come to an ADAPT event, you know. Um, well, but that wasn't enough. You know, I'm a young doctor. I, uh, that's me on the, the far right there. Uh, when our first visit to the Atkins Center, Dr. Atkins, Atkins in the middle, Jackie Aberstein on the left. Um, so um, he basically said, come visit my clinic which is what I learned to do, you know, 10 years ago in medical conferences, come visit my clinic. And about 20 people have made the trek, total, of visiting my clinic. And it's remarkable, they usually come from other countries. And although um, uh, I'm still happy to have you come shadow me in the office, um, if you're curious, if you're a doctor, health, health provider, but I didn't just start using the diet. What does any good researcher do? You study it. So I asked for money. <laughs> and um, Dr. Atkins got out his checkbook at the end of the day. I had a proposal ready, he wrote a, a check out of his personal check, a, a checking account, and we did our first study. By the time the second study, uh, which was a randomized trial, the first one was just 50 people over six months, um, see what happens. And that, that's kind of my, my minimal level. If you ask me about the blank diet, I'm going to say, show me a research paper. 50 people over six months. It doesn't have to be a randomized control trial. It doesn't have to be controlled. Just show me what happens in a you know, scientific setting, published, and then I'll comment on it. So there are going to be some questions you'll have today. I'm going to say, show me the paper. And you know, I, I mean, I'll be, give you more comment than that, but, but our paper that, that was 50 people over six months published in the American Journal of Medicine was in 2002, okay? So um, time flies, there's now research all over the world, and oh, I did continue to learn from Jackie Eberstein, who's here today. Thank you, Jackie, um, and you'll learn more from her uh, as well. from her uh, as well. So 21